I think we should say something about the other side of this equation, which it tends to get emphasized in most people's thinking about being good in the world. And this is the side of kind of the consumer facing side of not contributing to the obvious harms in a way that is egregious or, you know, dialing down one's complicity in this unacceptable status quo as much as possible. And so this goes to things like becoming a vegetarian or a vegan. Hey, what is up, guys? So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that outside of veganism, I'm a pretty big fan of Sam Harris. And he actually had a podcast come out recently. I think it was like four or five weeks ago titled Doing Good. And the theme of this podcast was, you know, how can we go about being a good person in the world? What does it mean to do good? and these kinds of things. So within the podcast, there were a couple of things that were said that from a vegan perspective can be a little bit triggering to hear, you know, like as a vegan. And they even touched on veganism a little bit in reference to how to be a good person. So I'm gonna analyze today just some of the things that were said by Sam. And just to ask the question, why exactly is Sam Harris still not a vegan? Increasingly, I'm looking to use this podcast and the Waking Up app to do more than merely spread what I consider to be good ideas. That's their primary purpose, obviously, but I wanna help solve some of the worst problems we face more directly than just talking about them. And I wanna do this systematically, really thinking through what it takes to save the most lives or reduce the worst suffering or mitigate the most catastrophic risks. So Sam talks here about how he really wants to, you know, face up to some of the worst problems we have very directly as opposed to just talking about them and how we can reduce some of the worst suffering in the world as well as save the most lives. So Sam Harris is a person who still supports animal agriculture, which is a clear source of some of the worst suffering on this planet. And when it comes to Sam's desire to want to save lives, I mean, let's think about what animal agriculture really is. It is a system which involves breeding animals into existence to be exploited and killed. How could somebody who is so concerned with mitigating suffering and reducing the amount of lives that are taken on this planet support a holocaust on a daily basis with their easily replaceable food choices, especially as somebody who is as financially stable as Sam Harris, where you know he has access to all of these different plant-based options. Sam also mentioned how he wants to help solve these problems more directly rather than just talking about them. Sam has admitted in the past that he believes supporting animal agriculture is unethical, yet still participates in consuming animal products. You know, I, I actually can't ethically defend eating meat. I, I do eat meat. I was a vegetarian for, for six years and began to feel that I wasn't getting enough protein. So here's a clear example of Sam Harris just talking about an issue while actively participating in the issue and supporting the issue. And this clearly goes against his recent, you know, conviction of like, I wanna start facing these serious problems head on rather than just talk about them. Switching your groceries from animal foods to plant foods is one of the ways in which a person can, at least at the individual level, directly face up to the lives lost and suffering derived from animal agriculture. And Sam as an individual going vegan with the huge following he has could potentially convince many others to go vegan, which would in turn significantly help reduce the demand for animal products, hence supply, and supply in this case is bred into existence animals who are killed. All right, let's now move on to a different point in the podcast. So way later in the podcast, the topic of going vegetarian and vegan comes up and how there are ways to go about helping animals outside of being vegan, like donating to specific animal welfare charities or companies who aim to synthesize lab-grown meat. And Sam ended up bringing up Memphis Meats. Yeah, and there are also ways in which the business community and, and innovation in general can come to the rescue here. So for instance, there's a company, uh, I believe the name is going to be changed, but it was, it was called Memphis Meats mm. that is spearheading this, this revolution in what's called cultured meat or clean meat, where they, you know, they take a single cell from an animal and amplify it so you know, no animals are killed in the process of making these steaks or these meatballs or these chicken cutlets, and, and they're trying to bring this to scale. Uh, and I, I had the, the CEO, Uma Valetti, on my podcast a couple of years ago and actually invested in, in the company along with many other people, and, and hopefully this will bear fruit. That's it. 
an example of something where, though it was unthinkable some years ago, we might suddenly find ourselves living in a world where you can buy steak and hamburger meat and, and pork and chicken without harming any animals. Now, I can agree that lab-grown meat taking over the meat industry would be an amazing thing, and obviously much less suffering and death would occur as a result. I also think it is a great thing that Sam ended up donating to Memphis Meats. But I don't really understand how Sam Harris's investment and donation to Memphis Meats justifies him right now financially supporting a holocaust, causing demand, which causes supply, which causes more suffering and death. To be frank, there is not this false dichotomy of I have to either go vegan or support lab-grown meat. You can certainly do both, and investing in lab-grown meat, as virtuous as it is, shouldn't excuse Sam for supporting an animal holocaust. I really do think that Sam has a strong emotional attachment to meat and is just one of those people who are waiting for lab-grown meat to take over. And assuming this is true and he is this kind of person, I mean, what kind of person is that when you really think about it? It's a person who feels it is too inconvenient to stop supporting an animal holocaust and is waiting until it becomes less inconvenient to officially stop supporting an animal holocaust. It makes you think about like where Sam Harris's morals really lie. I mean, think about how many vegans wouldn't be vegan if we took away all of the meat, dairy, and egg replacements. Of course, these things make it more convenient, but I know me personally, like I would still be a vegan if I had to eat things like, you know, rice and beans and all these kinds of things and had no access to plant-based meats and milks and ice creams and donuts and all these kinds of things. So what kind of person is it to like, you know, say, eh, yeah, you know, this thing is kind of wrong, whatever, but uh, yeah, whatever, I'm just gonna wait until lab-grown meat becomes, you know, full scale. This kind of topic reminds me of a recent video Cosmic Skeptic dropped about people who are waiting for lab-grown meat to come out in order to be vegan. Here's that video. A lot of people actually say this. They say, look, you know, I, I kind of get the argument, I'm on board, but I can't quite go vegan until until they make it taste right. Once, once lab-grown meat is a thing, yeah, then, then, then maybe I'll go vegan. It's like, right, well, then you obviously haven't been listening to a word that I've been saying. I, I pity the people who will have to speak to their grandchildren and, and, their grand, and, and say to their grandchildren, listen, I, I knew, when their grandchildren ask, why, why did you still eat meat? And they say, look, I knew that animals were being forced into gas chambers and separated from their children. And they were being macerated and thrown in bags to suffocate. I know that animals were having elastic bands tied around their testicles until they decay and fall off. Or, or if they don't fall off, they're scraped off as a means of um, castration. I know that when piglets were born, their teeth were yanked out and their tails were snipped off to prevent them cannibalizing each other when they go insane because of the conditions they're kept in and they're intelligent beings. I knew that this was happening, but man, <laughs> the vegan alternatives, they just didn't taste quite right. 80% there, 90% there, but they just didn't, they didn't bleed in the same way. They didn't have the same aftertaste. It's like, imagine trying to explain that to your kids. It's the conversation that we're going to have to have very quickly. If, if you're a kind of person who thinks, if you're the, the kind of person I'm talking about who, who thinks along those lines, like, yeah, I can kind of get on board with the argument, but not until, not until the taste is truly matched. It's not how it works. Even if vegan food, all vegan food tasted absolutely disgusting and horrible, without exception, we'd still have a moral obligation to go vegan, even if it tasted disgusting, because taste pleasure is not a consideration when talking about justifying torturing an animal. So yeah, guys, if I had to guess, I would say that Sam Harris is one of those, I'm gonna wait until lab-grown meat is widely available to go vegan kind of people. It's an honest shame that somebody so concerned with altruism and increasing well-being in the universe, and somebody of Sam Harris's financial status can't just make the ethical connection and switch over his lifestyle right now without lab-grown meat brought to scale. It really does say something about Sam in my view. So I would go further within the podcast and address some other points, but it does get a little bit repetitive. It's really just, you know, hard to hear someone like Sam Harris have a whole podcast dedicated to being good and doing good while being a person who, you know, supports some of the worst misery and suffering on this planet on a daily basis while having, you know, alternatives present. If you want to listen to the whole thing, I will link it below and it's also found on his Spotify. Thank you so much for watching guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you support my work and wanna help me continue doing this, you can support me on Patreon. The link is in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. W who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes, dude. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid...